Since we're going to be talking about the Bone Nars from Werewolf the Apocalypse, I thought it might be best if I kind of looked like one. A little disheveled. Not shaved. It looks like I haven't slept because I haven't done any of those things. The Bone Nars claim to be the underdogs, and they, they really are, of the Guru Nation. Their name, when it leaves the tongue of another in the Guru Nation, oftentimes is that of an insult. They are also the most numerous tribe, so they've made a lot of werewolf babies. And babies keep you up at night. They also have one of my most favorite gifts in Werewolf the Apocalypse. So let's talk about the Bone Nars. The Bone Nars didn't actually become a tribe until after the Concord, which ended the Impergium. Like the Glasswalkers, the Guru of this time, who would eventually become known as the Bone Nars, they did not appreciate, they did not want to separate their humanity and their werewolfness. They like to live in the cities. Just as a side note, if you're not familiar with the Impergium, this was an event in prehistoric times that the werewolves basically went to war with humanity. They tried culling the human population so much that the reason humans fear the dark is because of the Impergium. It was pushed by the Red Talons in that time, and it is still pushed and desired by the Red Talons today. Now, the Bone Nars rites and rituals as a tribe, they are very strange compared to the other tribes. The sources of their power and oftentimes the mechanisms with which they are performed often rely on human pop culture. Much of the rites and the rituals that the Bone Nars can perform, they are based around survival, and they give them a serious advantage when doing this. One of the rites that they use to help feed themselves in nearly any situation, I will talk about in a little bit. The Bone Nars as a tribe, they are not usually one for tradition. There is a couple things that they do hold very near and dear to themselves, and they're not willing to let those go. But those particular traditions are very far and few in between. What you will commonly see from a Bonar is maybe a shrine that is set up to the Super Bowl, or maybe a ritual that they perform is based off of the movements or sayings of some famous actor. The Bonar specialty is not just about survival, they are also very good at spiritual comfort. Bonars as a whole, they treat their tribe, their society, with a great deal of respect. Family means a lot. The elders within the Bonar tribe, they are greatly respected, and they receive one of the most honorific titles that can be bestowed by a Bonar, and this would be father or mother. Bonars typically don't have much. There's not much for them to give. They're not terribly materialistic. But one way that the Bonars measure the character of other Guru is by their hospitality. Those who have little and offer it freely to guests or whatever the situation may be are greatly revered and greatly respected by other Bone Nars. Now, somewhat ironically for the Bone Nars, they have a practice which they call the Ban of Man. Since 1540, the Bone Nars have tried to separate themselves from human society, at least the affairs of human society. Although this hasn't really applied to their pop culture and the things that they pull from that to create their own rituals, they try not to get too involved in humanity's decisions, politics, religion, economics. They try to keep distance from that. Now, as a tribe, since even the days of ancient Greece, the Bone Nars have been incredibly democratic. Those with experience in the world are typically elected as the tribal leaders, getting one of the elder titles, or if they are greatly respected, the father or mother title. Elders can make their own decisions. They don't need to have input from other members of the tribe. Those who are experienced typically do so anyways. But if they need to make a quick decision or a quick ruling without any input, it will be respected. And if not respected, then at least the decision will be upheld. Personal rights and freedoms are very important to the Bone Nars. They don't concern themselves with the greatness of the Guru Nation or pushing that narrative forward. They don't care about the status. They don't care about society as long as they can live the way they want to live. This doesn't mean they're anarchistic, although I'm certain there are several Bone Nars who admonish any form of rule, but they would be the exception, not the rule. 
vast majority of the Bone Nars are actually quite practical. When it comes to urban combat, there are few who can match the Bone Nars. The Glasswalkers would be a close second, but that's basically about it. Bone Nars use surprise as their main tactic. They are very good at guerrilla warfare tactics in urban environments. And because the Bone Nars general reputation is that of someone who's incompetent and they are looked down upon and scoffed at quite often, they use this as a tactical advantage, and this is even a message that they enforce when they go out among the world. Most Bonars tend to live in big sprawling cities, the urban environments. This is what they prefer. However, there are a select few who do live in the rural areas. Regardless of where you live as a Bonar, your voice is important. If you have something to say at a gathering, a meeting, or a moot, if it's a Bonar's moot, anyone can speak and their voice will be just as important as anyone else's. But where did the Bonar's come from? This is a more difficult area to piece together as record keeping and historical accuracy has not really been a strong point of the Bonar's. It is generally accepted that the Bonars originated within North Africa and India. Some of the other tribes like the Silent Striders, their histories actually recount sharing land, sharing territory with the Bonars. It was here in Egypt that the Bonars aided the Silent Striders in their war against the followers of Set. This didn't work out very well for the Silent Striders as they were cursed and they haven't really been back to their homeland. The Bone Nars were not specifically cursed by Set, though they were driven from their homelands and shattered and fractured. From here, the Bone Nars would move on to Rome, and this is where they would learn about the ideology of democracy, and they just latched onto that and never let go. This did put them into direct conflict with several vampire tribes, and in Rome, while they were already good scavengers, they more or less perfected the skills here. But as we all know, Rome didn't stay there forever, and when Rome fell, the Bonars were scattered and fractured again. From here, the Bonars were pushed out into Europe. Some stayed with the Geta Fenris and worked alongside them. Others integrated themselves into the outcasts, the downtrodden, not just werewolf tribes, but people specifically. During the medieval ages and the time of the Great Plague, the Bubonic Plague, the Bonars tried to help as many as they could. They tried to aid the poor, they tried to help the sick and the dying. They were even known to work with the were-rats. This was a tough time for the Bonar kin, as many of the human element of the tribe, they were dying to the plague. And if they weren't dying to the plague, then they were being killed off in the Inquisition and the witch hunts that happened during this time. This was the time of the First Inquisition. This event forced many of the supernatural creatures and forces in Europe at the time into hiding, although the Inquisitors themselves, they didn't really know what they were up against. But that Inquisition ideology survived, and this is how we get the Society of Leopold in Modern Knights. When ships were sailing to the New World as it was being rediscovered, the Bonars went on the ships, and this is how they spread themselves from Europe into the Americas. Canada, USA, and Mexico, even into South America. And on those continents, there was no end to wars. There was several world wars. There was revolutions. This is where the Bone... And the Bone Nars participated in all of it. It was during the world wars that the Bone Nars recognized the threat to Gaia that humanity posed. And the threat was realized when humanity's greatest weapon was unleashed. This was the atomic bomb. It was in these events, these horrific things that the Bonars saw, they saw humanity doing to themselves and to Gaia, that they tried to warn the other tribes about the threat of humanity, how far they had come. This forced the Bonars into seeking new relationships with strange creatures. Bonars have been known to work with vampires, and they've even been known to work with the were-rats again. The were-rats are also scavengers, but they can't quite do it in the same way that the Bonars can. If a Bonar ever hands you a... If a Bonar ever hands you a container with some food in it that they said that they just whipped up themselves, 
it's best you don't ask where that came from. The Bone Nars are excellent scavengers and they can create food out of anything. All a Bone Nar needs to do to make food is to have some sort of pot or something to cook the food in and they just grab whatever's lying around, like literally cigarette butts, trash, something from the dumpster, as long as they can put it in their pot and cook it, they need to add water and it doesn't have to just be H2O, they could just spit in it, that would work as well. The end result is kind of like porridge, it's pasty, it is bland. You would never know that it was made out of literal trash. It's also nutritious, it'll keep you going. But uh, like I said, don't ask where it came from. Now, while they are viewed as a secondhand tribe, a hand-me-down tribe, the Bone Nars don't see themselves in the same way. To other members of the Guru Nation, because they are so dirty and put out and just not very popular, they would appear to be losing. From the Bone Nar perspective, they are winning because there is more of them than any other tribe. And while it's not glamorous, they are surviving. They are winning the game of survival. There are also seven primary camps when it comes to the Bone Nars and one band camp. Not that kind of band camp. I mean, the bad one. You're not allowed to be part of this one. If you're fighting in a city with a Bone Nar, it's likely they are part of the swarm. If you're fighting in a city with a Bonar, it is very likely they are part of the Swarm Camp. The Swarm focus on dirty fighting, gaining any tactical advantage that they can. They are not honorable at all. They specialize in the urban environments and the guerrilla warfare in city environments. The Frankweiler Camp is more or less a protector of human culturalism, museums, libraries, Anywhere there is a cultural influence, it is likely under the protection of this particular camp. The Hood, more like the Robin Hoods, they take from the rich, give to the poor, in the expectation that the poor are using this to sustain themselves. The Rat Finks are a spy network of sorts for the Bonars. They are a network of kinfolk and guru who have what would be considered low socioeconomic jobs but ones that put them in places where they could overhear things. And those rural bone gnars I talked about, they are known as the hill folk. The road warders are a camp of bone gnars who protect hidden passageways. They protect streets. They try to make sure that there is always some way to go in a city to avoid contact with the worm and to keep these areas safe. There is the deserter camp. Now these guys and gals are not honorable, they are seeking a safe harbor from the coming apocalypse, whether that be by finding a second Gaia, a second world to live on. The only reason that they are motivated to do so is to not experience the apocalypse. It's entirely selfish and self-serving. They have no interest in saving the Guru Nation, they just want to save themselves. And finally, the banned camp of Bonars, the ones you don't want to run into in a dark alley or anywhere for that matter, they are called the Man Eaters, and they have broken the litany of the werewolves around consuming human flesh. They do this on the regular. If you'd like to learn about some of the other werewolf tribes, please click on the video on your screen now. Tell me in the comments below about your favorite Bonar characters or what camp your characters have fallen into. Thank you to all of my patrons who continue to support me in the channel. My name's Nathaniel. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.